Hello, I'm Suzanne Lochran, Principal at Brown International Academy. We're a International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program a public school located in Denver, Colorado, approximately five minutes from downtown Denver. I'd like to invite you into our school today to learn a bit about our RTI, or Response to Intervention Model, that we've created and implemented in our school. This is just one example of how data-driven decision-making can contribute to student success. RTI is the practice of providing high-quality, research-based instruction and interventions matched to student needs, monitoring their progress on a regular basis, and using student data to make instructional decisions. The goal, really, is accelerating learning for all students. Data team meetings are the heart of the RTI process, and in our school, we conduct those meetings weekly with grade-level teachers and intervention teachers during their 45-minute specials or planning time. Um, my previous target goal from uh, the end of January was to target a group of eight students who were not doing so well on the STAR early literacy test and I wanted to raise their overall scale score to at least a 740. And I've been just trying to close the gap between students in my class and so I took my lowest eight students on the STAR test and then I pinpointed some areas where I thought we could work on to help improve their scale score and so um, we worked on completing sequences, word boundaries, and ABC order. We had pretty good success. At the beginning of my SMART goal no one was at a scale score of 740, and um, at the end of the six weeks, five out of the eight had made 740 as a goal or higher. Um, I, had, I mean, I had someone during the six weeks who grew 220 scale score points just by focusing in on those three areas that were his weaknesses. Um, a lot of really great. I think this is the one opportunity we have every week to hear from teachers how they're teaching and how students are learning and support them in adjusting their instruction um, to meet the needs of all kids. It is the way that we can ensure that all students in our building are learning and that we're supporting teachers in providing quality instruction in the classroom. So you might think about, it looks like you're graphic organizers to me. I mean, they're wonderful, but look at several different comprehension strategies. So you have retail, story elements, main idea and supporting details, sequencing, and you've built them all in, which is really cool. But you might want to think about what's, what's the one you really want to push hard. And then once you select that specific focus, pre and post test with the same kind of assessment, because this is definitely multiple comprehension strategies. Not that they wouldn't practice, continue to practice all those, but for the purpose of your targeted area, it just would simplify it, I think, to have a single focus. Because if we make our goals too broad, then your brain kind of, it's, right. it's easier for you if you have one really clear goal and you talk about it with your students. And you will see in the context of data team meetings, teachers move very quickly from their current analysis of that body of evidence to what am I going to do as a teacher? to support them in closing the achievement gap, to fill in areas which are identified as um, weaknesses or deficiencies in their background. It's a very uh, positive, hopeful, um, proactive way to plan for instruction. You're looking at kids testing at 85% or higher on AR. Yeah. But that's, that's one of your goal. goal. Yeah. Another goal is that they take at least two AR tests a week so that they're reading often. And then your other one would be around a particular comprehension strategy. What's your gut feeling? What do you feel like you might? target in in terms of comprehension strategy? Do you feel like main idea in detail or do you feel like summarizing? I feel like summarizing. What do you what think? Do you, do you think summarizing? I feel like summarizing has helped my students the most because then they're able to retell the story, apply the comprehension strategies that we use at the table, and then it shows on their AR reports when they go on quiz. 
And you kind of have to teach main idea and supporting details to get to that written yeah, yeah. summary. Yeah. So, but that's going to be kind of your end result, you think, that they can write a summary. Yeah. That's wonderful. As I think about it, and, you know, the feedback we receive as educators historically on the work we're doing, our success in, in supporting student learning, we would receive once a year. When CSAP testing yeah. came out. And, and that's in the summer after the school year's over and the test results come in and you won't even have the same students next year. In other words, there was no feedback system, no way to self-correct in course. Um, and, I mean, r really, could, could an airplane arrive at its destination if it didn't have a set of <laughs> instruments that gave it constant feedback that guided, uh, guided the plane towards its ultimate goal? This is, you know, what, what RTI and what formative and diagnostic assessments enable us to do is receive constant feedback on the, on the success of our, our, our curriculum and our instructional practices. One of the things that I actually really like about the student progress monitoring is it, it not only visually shows like how they're yeah. testing, but also the next page. So they show shows. the kids that. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah, I print it off every single week and they, they take it home with them. I want them to show so parents. I want them to explain it to their, their parents or guardians. I want them to show their classroom teacher. So <laughs> they, they can see their scale score. Okay, last week I scored 254, but this week I scored 346. Tell me the changes in that. You know, how, how, what, is, what does that look like? Look at the scaled score. So they understand that not only visually can they see it, but they can actually like read it and talk about and the, talk what about they've it. done to improve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of sitting at home. When yeah. I show my students, we spend the Friday in the computer lab for the progress monitoring, um, and so I just show them on a screen. But I think I'm going to start printing it off because I feel like if they explain it maybe to their parents, they can yes. take more ownership, like you said. Totally. And really have to understand it in order to be able to explain it. Exactly. The data team context has really given us an opportunity to engage in um, reflection, inquiry, collaborative problem solving, uh, generation of new ideas, etc., on a regular systematic basis. So you really see in the context of data teams much more thoughtful conversations about what is instructional best practice here, what's working and not working for different students under different circumstances, and what kind of adaptations to instruction or interventions are yielding successful results for which students. There is no exact way to deliver instruction or perfect curricula. It really is dynamic and has to be aligned with individual student needs.